Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back in Mrs. Harris. It is now August the 3rd. Oh, I'm kind of depressed to say that we are our cross-country 60-day Harris U.S. tour visiting all of our coaching, well, not all of our coaching clients, but visiting coaching clients, podcast listeners, book buyers, our EXP family. It is coming to a conclusion. This is our last evening in Murphy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to spend the morning here and then driving down to Atlanta and then off uh, to the Caribbean. Yes. Back home it's to Puerto busy Rico. busy a couple days. Yeah, it has been a, an extraordinary sojourn that it is mm-hmm. going to basically require, I'm sure for both of us, quite a, a lot of defragging before we really <laughs> kind of put it all together yeah. in our heads. Because every day, it's like every day or every other day was just one thing or the other or the other. Mm-hmm. And other than driving through some of the uh, Midwest, it was always an interesting new experience. Yes. And we saw we did see a ton of people. We saw family and, as you said, listeners and, and coaching members. So that was fantastic, as well as seeing so much of the country. I think I might have forgotten to write down Tennessee on my list. It might be 23 states. But here and there, we have our bird feeders installed here in Murphy. So that's something uh, fun that we did yesterday with Zoe. Going to plant a few tulip bulbs, and then we will point ourselves back towards Puerto Rico. And when here's, this is kind of funny. When we were in California, Julie bought – tell them about the little plants oh. you bought. Oh, by the way, this is Real Estate Coaching yes. Radio. But at least for another day – well, actually, not for another day. This is the last day of the Harris uh, U.S. Tour – uh, travel log, yes, right? Podcast wise, but yeah, exactly. And uh, then we're going to be back to normal real estate coaching um, as uh, radio, as you guys have been used to. But we will be getting to a couple points with regards to being an introvert here in a second. Yep. Uh, but this is kind of a fun story that some of you will appreciate. When we are in, um, will you tell your story? Yes. One of our goals on this trip was to actually see the giant redwoods, the sequoia uh, trees in the forest, which was amazing. If you haven't done that, that's well worth your trip. And that's an interesting state park that really wraps its way through California. There's uh, quite a few different places that you can see these giant redwoods. Well, on one of the roadside stops, we got a baby sequoia sapling. And so as Zoe and I got to plant that. First, you put it in a pot, let it grow and grow. And then, you know, eventually it's going to be not instantaneously 3,000 feet in the sky. But, <laughs> exactly. you know, um, well, so that'll be good. And we've nursed it along. We've had it uh, getting sprayed in the car for, I don't even, probably three weeks, I think. Mm-hmm. So hopefully uh, we've got it in the right spot and we're going to have our neighbor's uh, sequoia tree sit for us and see how it goes. Well, it's kind of funny to think that this might be the only giant sequoia 3,000 years from now in all of North Carolina. I know, but you know, I read about them and it says that they have uh, grown up and thrived in lots of different environments as long as they stay moist because you know, they're used to being uh, in the ocean mist. And we'll see. Maybe maybe it doesn't get to be that giant, but it'll still be fun to have one. Well, we won't be around to see it uh, when it's 3,000 feet. But I mean, <laughs> right. that's, that's, you know, thousands, thousands something. of years from now. Right, Indeed. exactly. Well, so, uh, Julie, this has been an extraordinary experience. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of our podcast listeners have appreciated following along with us on um, his Instagram is where we've been yes. posting most of our stuff, so, some on Facebook mm-hmm. as well. But it's uh, Tim and Julie Harris on Instagram. If you're not listening, uh, I'm sorry, if you're not following along on our travel journeys and if you want to go back and see all the places we went, it was, like I said, it was pretty extraordinary. Julie and I are car enthusiasts. Um, I think Julie is a car enthusiast of the second order, and I'm a car enthusiast. By association, (laughs) yes. Exactly. Well, she's come a long way. So if you're into cars at all, uh, classic European sports cars mostly, make sure you go to Instagram and see all the pictures we took from Car Week. Uh, Check out all the places we went all over the country. I think we have some more we're going to post probably while we're sitting in the airport. Well, I mean, it was kind of a funny thing. I had this epiphany this morning that we we were uh, driving down from – uh, Monterey Car Week, and we were driving on US One, and we were we intentionally wanted to stay on US One as long as we could, even though it took yes. a lot longer. Mm-hmm. And we were following most of the way down a 1977 Lamborghini uh, Countach Periscopo. I won't bore in you. Purple, nonetheless. It was in purple, and he was driving like a bat out of hell. He was driving so fast. And, um, you know, it's carefully for the most part, because you can see a good distance ahead. But to see this tiny little bizarre spaceship of a car 
you know, that was essentially designed in the late sixties and built in the early seventies and all the way up until the, really the uh, mid eighties to see that car uh, in that environment was really extraordinary. And I was, the, the reason I was, I'm commenting on this is because I was flipping through old pictures and I saw a picture that you took mm -hmm. when he was basically downshifting and all the, you know, unspent fuel dumping out of the carburetors yeah. through the Lots exhaust videos, yeah. as he went to pass like yeah. seven cars. But the funny part of the story was this guy, it turns out it wasn't hard to find who owned it because it was a, you know, pretty rare, famous car. Um, but it was a guy named Simon Kidson, who's a famous, uh, I think he's a, dry, a race car driver, but also a, a British car dealer. And uh, so we, you know, basically he was able to, you know, we weren't going to drive as fast as he was in some uh, sections. I'm sure he was going well over 100 miles per hour. And he pulled away from us, and then it was probably maybe a half hour later that we finally caught up where he was, and he was had been pulled over by a cop and a state trooper. One of trooper. the only cops we saw on that whole journey, by Exactly. The way. Well, I mean, look, But they got him. If you're going to be a police officer and you have a choice between pulling over a pickup truck or a, yeah. bright, or a bright purple a Lamborghini, I'm going for the Lamborghini Absolutely. every day of the week. Right? Any more interesting experience <laughs> exactly. for you, too. You, you, I promise yeah. you, his friends bought him beers that night. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He got bonus points for the best pullover. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyway, so there are lots of little funny experiences like that. And, uh, you know, funny experiences with people, too. And yesterday, we, I think we heard our second true North Carolina accent. Oh, yes. Definitely. It is definitely something that is unique to this part of the country. It's not really like a Texas accent. I won't no. say that. Much more Southern. S much, much more Southern, much more, more specific. Um, right. And you have to have a tuned in ear to understand uh, what one gentleman we spoke to was saying. You had to <laughs> yeah. sort of think about what he said and give yourself a little delay yes. so you can kind of put the pieces together. But yeah, that was kind of an interesting. It'd be interesting experience. to see whether Zoe picks up any of that and integrates it into <laughs> her know, interesting little funny. dialect that along, she's developed, along with her uh, Puerto Rican uh, Spanish and her the rest of it. Uh, yeah, hilarious. and watching a lot of Harry Potter and having the occasional British sneak in. So. Yeah, we are raising an interesting human, that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so let's get back to our points. We yep. started a series uh, it was late last week on how to be an introvert and win at the highest level. We've gotten a lot of great feedback on the series. Um, we've done similar series before on this particular topic. And I think the reason it resonates with so many people, even if you are not an introvert, you will probably have one in your family or maybe married to one or, you know, your what have you is your best friend is an introvert. Maybe you've noticed that in some cases they've sort of struggled to easily communicate and get along uh, with other people or just, you know, whatever. This is an opportunity for you to better understand, even if you're not an introvert or if you want to, you know, we've reeled in DISC into this conversation too, for some of you who have studied that before. Uh, but even if you are on the analytical side or even the amiable side, um, or rather if you're on the driver expressive side, this is a good opportunity for you to sort of maybe get to know your, your local, um, you know, I just screwed that up. Even if you're on your amiable expressive side, yes. it allows you to get to know your analytical driver side and your, right. in, in, your natural introverts a little bit better. So Julie's got two uh, points and then we'll wrap up this series and we've got something exciting that Julie's uh, prepped for you. We won't be doing a podcast on Monday. We'll actually be traveling, but we will be doing a we'll podcast. Do a new series on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Yes. Okay, good. Oh, Julie, by mm -hmm. the way, special notice for all of you guys in Premier Coaching. And there's thousands of you that listen to our podcast every day. And I'm sure a majority of you are uh, coaching clients. Uh, we are, and make sure you've logged into Harris Learning and looked at all the new content that's getting added. We're updating a lot of the um, luxury home uh, content we've created. We're updating a lot of the other systems that we've had. Uh, just updating for, I got to sneeze. Bless you. <laughs> Sorry. I do that. I only sneeze when I'm on the podcast. I know it's weird. It is weird. Um, but uh, so updating, yes, but also adding new content, and that'll be very consistent during fourth quarter. Yep. And for those of you who are indeed premier coaching clients or who soon will be, uh, I and the other coaches will be announcing what is new and how to find it on your learning website. And uh, we are going to be doing an official launch next week of what will be a four month challenge for all of you who want to start your year early, your 2022 early, so you can really build some massive momentum going into the new year, which by the way, is something all of you should be doing. The worst time to restart your year is actually at the beginning of the year. You wanna get ahead of the year, that way you've already got momentum going into the year. And that goes with going to the gym, that goes with just anything that you're thinking about, oh, I'll just start it next year. Do it starting this year and uh, we are going to hopefully create, we're gonna create a plan that you will hopefully find useful so that you can, um, you know, like I said, get a jump on the year. That is the key number one secret uh, that any top producer knows. We actually had, true story, we had somebody once, 
actually write us an email, a rather nasty email. And this was someone in a small town. It was a lady who was a dominant agent. And she was actually angry because we were essentially sharing. Now, this was a while ago, but still, that we were sharing too many of the secrets that gave her a competitive advantage. The first time I read it, I thought she was joking. I thought she was just being, you know, just trying to be humorous. And she wasn't. She was dead serious. But it's like somehow we, Julie and I, were revealing the book of secrets to all agents. But you know what? It doesn't mean that all agents are going to do something with the information if you, even if you give it to them. And that, unfortunately, is the truth. You know, we, we share with you guys how to be successful. We share you, with you guys how to build um, ever-increasing, um, you know, real estate businesses that ever-increasing levels of profit. We talked about that extensively yesterday. But, you know, a few of you, 10%, 15% of you will embrace it. You'll join our coaching program. You'll actually build these coaching businesses that produce lots of profit. But I'm not, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. A vast majority of you, it's just not your time. You're just not ready. You listen to the podcast, you get a little, you know, tidbits from it. You're not necessarily that serious about your success. You're not that serious to basically really essentially sign yourself up for a journey that's going to require a lot of work, a lot of learning, a lot of relearning, but it's going to get you to the top of the mountain uh, a lot quicker. Some of you won't be ready for that for a long time, maybe never, but others of you are, and others of you have found this podcast and found our book, Harris Rules, have joined our coaching program, and you're now on the right path. The key for you now is not slow down and follow one course until successful. And that is a chapter in our book, Harris Rules. And that, of course, is called uh, Focus, Follow One Course Until Successful. Now, a second ago, I announced that we were going to be uh, rolling out, a, 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 I'm tempted to say fourth quarter plan, but it isn't really what it is. Fourth quarter it, plus. Fourth quarter plus. There you go. That maybe should be the name. Mm -hmm. And um, we, uh, by the way, the reason we're intentionally launching this not in fourth quarter, but in fourth in the end of third quarter is because we think that in fourth quarter, there's going to be a lot more of a slowdown that happens because of other consternations in the economy. Nothing for you to worry about, but we are seeing signs that there's going to be, probably be more people taking themselves out of the housing market than normally do, in, uh, especially in December. And you can see that by just a whole bunch of different early warning signs. So you need to essentially prepare now opposed to waiting even until October to start preparing for the new year. But what, we're, what we are going to be basing a lot of the fourth quarter plan on is the real estate treasure map. And we've updated the real estate treasure map and we want to give it to you for free. And all you've got to do is text uh, the word success to 47372. Text the word success to 47372. Now the real estate treasure map is for sale on Amazon for 20 bucks, but don't buy it for a couple of reasons. One, I want to give it to you for free and two, it's the older version. So go ahead and text the word success to 47372. And when you do, we'll text you back a link. You click on the link and you download the book. And this is your fill in the blank business plan. And again, the fourth quarter plus plan that Julie's going to be creating will be largely based on the real estate treasure map. Because frankly, it's almost impossible to do better than what that treasure map really is. It's your business and life plan. It's not just a bunch of pages to fill out, but it actually gives you explanations on how to go through every single step of your 2022 business and life plan. So just text the word success to 47372. And when you do, you're also going to be entitled to a free coaching call with one of our new member coaches. And don't worry, we will call you and we'll offer you that free coaching call. But for now, the urgent action you should all be taking is text the word success to 47372. Exactly. So we're going to wrap up our series about how to be a real estate rock star, even if you are indeed an introvert. And so we're on to four, uh, points 14 and 15. And then as Tim said, next week, we're going to start a new series with you. So point number 14, upgrade everything immediately. Audrey Hepburn once spoke about how she dressed for the roles she played so that she could better play the characters she was asked to portray. Keep in mind that she had very little acting um, coaching before she got her first major roles, just like many of you haven't had that much real estate training or the training you've had maybe hasn't been serving you well. So she was in that same boat. And here's a great quote from her. She said, I believe in manicures. I believe in overdressing. I believe in primping at leisure and wearing lipstick. I believe in pink. So I would like that one. I believe happy girls are the prettiest girls. And I believe that tomorrow is another day. And I believe in miracles. So here's the secret to that. Confidence does come from looking the part. At least part of your confidence should come from looking the part. If you're unsure about your suit choices, go to Neiman Marcus and have a consultant help you. You don't even have to go to Neiman Marcus. Or, you know, someplace rep 
you know, exactly. respectable. Well, you can just right? look in, you can look in magazines and whatnot. You sure. don't need to sign yourself up for excessive But retail. you don't have to wing it either, you know? Right, exactly. Well, that is your point, ultimately. Mm -hmm. But Julie, you know, just along those lines, um, yes. the uh, there are tons of places online now, especially for men, mm -hmm. that you essentially send your measurements and your pictures, and then you can have, uh, you can sign up for... Uh, uh, like a personal shopper kind but of? But it's a personal shopper, but they send you suggested outfits, like complete, mm -hmm. you don't have to think about anything. And then they'll send them to you in a box. You try on what you like. You keep what you like and what you don't like you send back. Yeah, and really then cool. And then they get to know what your style is, what you like, what fits you, what doesn't. And then you can essentially go through your entire wardrobe and, and upgrade everything. And the importance of upgrading everything, again, you're a salesperson. People have expectations of how successful anybody's look, right? But they have – like I was mentioning Simon Kitson the, the, a second mm -hmm. ago, that guy that was you know driving that – bright, crazy purple Lamborghini. Well, when Julie and I were researching him and we were Googling him, we found out that he had won some sort of best dress oh, award. that's right. At Pebble Beach, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, but it? isn't that hilarious? Yeah. I mean, so he's remembered as being best dressed and he kind of creates an aura around the fact that he can put some sort of crazy outfit together. I mean, you know, no surprise, purple Lamborghini, right? <laughs> but the moral of the story is, is it really does give you almost an unfair advantage in the marketplace, in life in general, if you do dress a notch or two above what everyone else does. And they won't necessarily consciously notice that you look nicer. They'll just subconsciously notice that you look nicer. And, those, and, and here's the reason it's incredibly important that you take this seriously. And this goes with the car you drive, the signs you have. I think uh, you know this is another series of podcasts we did on your moments of truth. Every way you come in contact with the, the marketplace, because real estate is virtual. Real estate offices only basically are for mostly, and I don't be offended by this, but generally speaking, top producing agents don't go into real estate offices because they're out in the field working. And so real estate offices now are essentially for you know lower producing agents and physical locations and also for the subordinate staff of real estate top producers. So does a real estate office even need to exist anymore? It really doesn't. If you essentially have or use a lot of the online software that's available, you know, the software as a service type stuff and you have a notebook computer and you have a phone, the, uh, you don't really need an office. You, you don't. I mean, some people, again, will argue this point because they like to look at their staff and whatnot, but your customers do not go to real estate offices anymore. If COVID didn't convince you of that, then nothing will. But here's my point. People, so your real estate office and your building and your, you know, all those things used to be the thing that would uh, impress your potential customers, right? That's traditionally since like the you know stone age, how any kind of business would set itself apart is by having a fancy office. But anymore, nobody cares about a fancy office because nobody goes to a fancy office. Agents don't really go. Uh, eight, you know, buyers and sellers don't really go. So your moment of truth, the opportunity for you to have an impact on a potential client is literally how you present yourself, how you look. I know some of you take some offense to that. I just want you to be as basic and practical as you possibly can. Just think about it from your own perspective. If you're walking into or you have somebody come visiting you that's going to sell you something, they're there to basically help you choose some new service or product or whatever it is. And one person, and let's just say the products are in or, they're the same, in different companies, different brands, but essentially they're offering the same thing with the same value, the same everything. And let's even say the salespeople have the same level of ability to explain their products. Everything is virtually the same, pricing the same. So da, 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 da. One of them looks nice. One of them actually shows up on time. One of them actually is courteous. One of them actually takes their shoes off when they open the door. One of them obviously is more professional and more focused on and doesn't talk about themselves, focuses on asking questions, getting to know you, how they can help you solve your other uh, problems that you maybe know you have or don't know you have. That's the difference between one of the many, many differences, truthfully, between somebody who's really at the top of their game in sales of any variety, but in real estate in particular. So when you're choosing clothes to wear, when you're choosing watches to wear, when you're choosing the car to drive, it all matters. It really, truly does. And there's a list in the Harris Rules book about this. There's a whole chapter about this. And I'll give you a couple of examples of agents being lazy. Number one is, yes, I know the house is probably going to sell right away. Oh, so you don't want to put a sign out. It's too much work. You stop well, now, using signs. So now you're okay. going, now you're moving. That's a moment of truth though. Right. But you're moving to moments of truth. So if we, yes. we should talk about that. Mm -hmm. So in a modern real estate office, that's virtual. Talk about all the moments of truth. And again, a moment of truth, this is something we got from Howard uh, Britton, God rest his soul in heaven. But a moment of truth is something where you are coming in contact with the public, right? So you're a business, the public are the people that will be transacting with you. So your moment of truth is when they come in contact with you. And I remember when Howard was originally teaching this to all of his Howard stars, which mm -hmm. Julie and I were, 
he um, was using Ritz Carlton as an example. Yes. Ritz Carlton essentially had a list of all the places where they came in contact with their with their guests, basically. Mm -hmm. And so, and as Howard Stars, this is back in the '90s. We made, and this ended up, by the way, in, in uh, Gary Keller's original book, The uh, Millionaire Real Estate Agents. And, and Howard would always have his events at Ritz Carlton, so we could yep. relate to this. Exactly. But so, what are your moments of truth in your real estate business? Let's start making a list. Sure. Well, it comes from your first contact. How do you speak on the phone? I would say it even comes before that, how quickly you respond when somebody asks for help to you. So now, how does this relate to being an introvert, by the way? Well, so introverts will sit there and think about it too long and then not end up doing it, take too long to do it, and then the lead is gone. Then they decide the lead wasn't any good. Well, or they'll put them <laughs> in a CRM and drip on them. Right, but, so but, they can avoid contact. Exactly. But the other thing that you have to remember as an introvert, because that's the theme of this podcast series mm -hmm. we've been doing, is that if you're an introvert, you need to make your moments of truth not around your personality. You make make them dynamic and versatile. And I know that. L let me give you a real practical example. If you have a very overly analytical approach, Julie just mentioned something is perfect to lead follow up. And I want the information now, and I don't want to be dripped upon. And I or let's say you're amiable, you're you less introverted, but you're somebody who likes to bond and get to know you. And I want to do business now. I want to list my house now. And you want to sit around and, you know, get to know me for a while before you're actually make me moving. double opt in. Exactly. <laughs> I don't like that. And a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people in society uh, don't want to have these long protracted uh, entry points into uh, doing business with somebody. And you can see this is true in the way technology companies work. Technology companies are essentially they're making their process simpler. The simpler and the more elegant a system is, the more efficient it's going to be. And so if you're designing your business experience or your public facing, consumer facing experience around your introverted mind and your introverted thinking, you're just basically pigeonholing yourself only to appeal to other people that are thinking and acting like you, which if you want to, you know, it doesn't work like this, but remember there's four distinct personality styles. There's DISC, right? And two of those personality styles have are dominantly introverted. That's drivers and analytical types. And if you're designing your business approach, your website, your signs, your processes, your lead follow-up around your particular perceptions of what they want, you lose. Because the, the thing is, is, again, focusing on introverts for the sake of this series, an introvert is going to not want to be perceived as being overly direct. An introvert is going to want to be perceived as uh, it, they see the world as everyone wanting more and more information before they're going to make a decision. An introvert is not going to be expressive. An introvert is not going to be uh, emotional. An introvert is not going to be somebody who is going to be in like just even the stupid rudimentary things. They're not going to use they're going to use darker tone colors on their websites and their and any sort of, um, you know, uh, logo, whatnot right. and branding that they do. They're not going to feel comfortable being anything other than themselves. And that's going to lead to essentially their world getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And the point of this series on being an introvert was the fact that you can essentially adapt to the rest of the world. You can be of service to more people than just people that are also introverted. And it does really come down to all the little things we talked about since last Thursday. And again, go through your moments of truth. Ask yourself, like, here's, I'll tell you the way Julie and I hack this. So Julie and I are both introverts. And what we intentionally look for in our business and our coaching business when we're hiring people is we look for people that are not like us because we don't need any more introverted dorks. Julie and I pretty much got those boxes checked. Okay. <laughs> and we want uh, versatility within our company, right? you know, even amongst the coaches, we have coaches that are all different for personality styles or, you know, again, it's not a diagnosis. It's a guide that tend towards the more analytical or the more driver or the more amiable or expressive. We have our bases covered just like we do with in Premier Coaching, where we coach you and show you literally basically have done it for you. The pre-listing package covers your bases. It's got something for each of those styles, right? So you've got a little bit of uh, statistics and facts and charts and graphs for your analytics. You've got a, a very great, uh, beautiful design for people who are more expressive. You've got testimonials for amiable there, there, people, well, you know? Well, there's a page in there called Giving Back that we put in there just sure. for amiables. Right. But, a driver would not naturally think to do that up nope. front. They're going to just want to close the deal. But you know what? Maybe your prospect isn't like you. Maybe your prospect is more amiable and actually reads every single testimonial and Googles the people to talk to them about you. That this, does happen. This is what we talked about yesterday, basically. And when, when our system, that's part of the Harris Coaching system, 
uh, is designed to appeal to all different personality styles. So you don't have to actually think as to whether or not you've studied this enough to the right. point where you're doing it correctly. The, just the, all the different touch points that we talked about, your moments of truth. You can just plug into our system in the uh, pre-listing pack, as Julie's describing, listing presentation, all the different things that we do that are designed for you to essentially win the listing and win the lead, win the sale. All those things are designed to appeal to all different personality styles. All of our scripts, all of our conversation outlines, all of our presentations are designed so that you can adapt the presentation itself to the people that you're presenting to. So even if you're not naturally versatile, if you follow our system, there's versatility built into the system to compensate for your lack of versatility. That's right. So let's say that you're an ultra driver, which by the way, there aren't that many of them, even though some of you have been coached otherwise. But let's say you're kind of impatient. You want to cut to the chase. You just want to close for the appointment. But you do use our pre-qualification script, which includes a little bit of rapport building and a lot of questions to drill down and see whether that even is a pre-qualified appointment. It catches you so that you don't have to think about it, right? And, and also, if you think about it now, moving away from introverts and talking yeah. about, for example, your amiable sorts, mm -hmm. the amiable sorts, the relationship types, which North Carolina is full of, right? You know, <laughs> yes. You're not going to have a conversation until you hear about their dog. You're right. The, the pre-qualifying yeah. questions are designed specifically to make it. So even if you are, you're abhorrent to feeling like you're being overly direct with somebody, the pre-qualifying questions, how we've written them and some questions we've given you variants of the question, variations of the question so that you won't feel like you're being overly direct. And I do agree how you're going to ask a question in, to somebody in New York, New York, and how you're going to ask a question to somebody in Murphy, North Carolina, same basic question, but how you go about framing that uh, conversation outline, that question. I agree a hundred percent. You've got to edit it, alter it, depending on your environment. It just makes sense. We've already done that for you. All you've got to do is copy what we've done. And then you need to internal, I'm sorry, you need to memorize it, internalize it, and then personalize it. But you don't get away from the content or the point of the no. question. You just make it a little bit different. Just like in the South, you're more likely to do a two-step listing presentation yep. than when you are in, say, Manhattan, right? I, I had a little flashback when we were living in Texas. You remember when we had just moved from Nevada to Texas, and we were setting up all of our utilities and different things, and there would be these service provider guys like the propane guy or the whoever came out, and they'd do their thing. We'd chat with them a little bit, and they'd kind of just, like, hang out. Right. And I asked one of the neighbors, like, are you supposed to tip your service providers? Like, what, what's the deal? And one of our neighbors said, oh, no, they just want to share barbecue secrets with you. Yeah, exactly. And we're like, what? OK. So, you know, there, there's different regional differences, certainly. And we are sensitive to that. But the questions don't change. It's just how you go about it. And that's where coaching comes in. It's one thing to just say, hey, here's a script. It's another one to talk about this stuff on But really, on the point our of all this stuff. is do not treat other people like you want to be treated. I know that's the golden rule. But that golden rule applies specifically to treating people with respect and treating people politely. It doesn't necessarily mean to treat them like they want to, the way you want to be communicated with, especially if you're an introvert, and the way you want to discern information and the way you want to essentially intake uh, content, it, media, is different than somebody who's a, uh, not an introvert. That's right. It's and, all about versatility at the end right. of the day. Yes. So point number 15, know that you as an introvert can make as much money in real estate, if not more than somebody who is twice as outgoing. You'll be more studied, assuming you follow our points from the podcast, you'll be more studied, more polished, more scripted, more effective, and still remain true to yourself. As I say to our introverted coaching clients, be yourself first, but then be you talking about real estate second. Yeah. And that's the best, easiest way for you to, for us to end today's show in this series and let's give you some practical, tactical examples of what we actually mean by that. So, for example, if you happen to like music, if you happen to like, you know, animals, if you happen to like cars, if you happen to like whatever it is you happen to like, put yourself in an environment where you're. And if you, by the way, don't have any things you have any, that are of interest to you, which is we ran into people like that before mm -hmm. who profess never to have had any real interest because. You know, I get it. Sometimes you come from, um, you know, lack of exposure. Well, it's socio socioeconomic sure. things that will make it so that you didn't spend a lot of time creating. I mean, truthfully, I was like that. Most of my interest didn't come until I was older because I was too busy working, especially as, as a kid and as a young mm -hmm. adult. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. But you might be one of those people that have yet to develop any personal interests that you can find, you know, a common language with, with other people. Develop them, create them. Yeah, it's you know? not too late. It's not too late, right? It doesn't matter. Even if you're old and you, you don't think you have any, you know, the dog don't hunt no more. There you go. That's North Carolina right there. <laughs> Whatever yeah. it is, you still can develop new interests. Yeah. Um, I'm, we're going to be developing new interests living here in North it, Carolina. TVs and uh, my, my bird watching, which... I don't get much bird watching in Puerto Rico because there's things that eat birds and there's iguanas everywhere and their eggs get chomped. So, we, so we have, you know, I'm, I'm dusting that off. We have a five foot, maybe longer uh, iguana that lives in oh our uh, back of our, uh, on the golf course by some palm trees in our property in uh, Puerto Rico. And this thing, you cannot see it until it wants to be seen and it wants to be seen. You cannot, it will not run from you. It does not, it's not scared of you. Spike. It sometimes comes out up on our patio and it'll scratch at the back door. It's like, what the hell do you He's want? You're not terrifying. coming in. Yeah. And yeah. this is, if you've seen a, an iguana that reaches maturity, they do look like something from a, a, a really like your, wor- your like worst nightmare kid. as a kid, basically. Yeah, for sure. But look, the bottom line guys, the bottom line with all of this information is, is that you are in the people helping business, your highest and truest purpose on this planet. The thing that's going to make you feel the most fulfilled and the most happy, no matter how introverted you are, is being of service to other people, helping other people solve problems. And I realize the way an introverted person solves problems naturally for other people is different than the way an extroverted person solves problems for other people. But realize in the real estate sales business, which is what you are in, and I always will remember you guys, even though I know some of it, some of you are offended when I say this, you are a salesperson. If you do not believe me, look at your real estate license. It says real estate salesperson in most states. That's what you have, a real estate salesperson's license. You are a salesperson. There's nothing Nothing wrong with being a salesperson. The we're, here is an interesting fact: the wealthiest people in the history of humanity have always been salespeople. There are no exceptions to that. And I'm not necessarily saying the guy selling Tupperware, but the guy selling his ideas, or the gal selling her, uh, you know, her inspirations for some new scientific discovery or something. They have. It's one thing to be good at, say, for example, learning how to solve scientific health-related issues. Let's say, for example, but it's another thing to be able to sell that to other people. So even religious leaders, uh, dare I say political, uh, I will, you know, put quotes around this leaders, they all have to be great salespeople first. Um, And the sooner that you accept the fact that you have to be a great salesperson, then you realize that a great salesperson is nothing other than somebody who solves problems for other people. When you put those thoughts together and then you actually do a little check in with yourself and realize that the happiest you ever are is when you're being a service to other people, when you're helping solve somebody else's problem. So if you are in tune with that, which is true for all of you, and if you are then in, in realization that maybe you're an introvert to the point where it's stymieing your ability to work with other people, you now have your path forward. You now know what you need to do. You now know, at least you, I think you have an inkling of what you're not experiencing um, as a real estate professional, as a salesperson, but also as a human, because you're accepting the fact, believing that you have limitations with regards to the people that you can associate with and the people that you can help. And I hope you give yourself an opportunity to set that aside. I'm not telling you to be, um, you know, uh, disingenuous right. or fake or nothing like no, that. Be yourself first. Be yourself. Talking about real estate second. That's right. And that's the essence of it. And in, so, in doing so, you will help more people solve their problem, which is what you are supposed to be doing. And then guess what happens then? You then start making a heck of a lot more money because you're helping a lot more people solve problems. And then you start on a different financial trajectory. And only that, finan- that financial trajectory was in your way, was made uh, possible for you because you decided to be of service to more people because you've decided to say there are attributes and strengths to being an introvert, but there are also more attributes and strengths to you being an introvert that is versatile enough to work with extroverts. That's the bridge that we're hoping that all of you will cross because on the other side of that is a richer, fuller life. There's no doubt. And unfortunately, what happens to a lot of analytical people, and we see this happening and you see it happening as well, is they have a tendency as they grow older to make the world smaller and smaller and smaller. start to think there's something wrong with them. Right. They just aren't a people person. Because they're not That's just not for me. I, the scripts aren't for me. And, you know, it, it's most obvious amongst introverts. It can happen to anybody who is non-versatile. You know, they, they could just not hit it off. But this is something that you can correct. It's something that you're adding on to your personality. You're not replacing your personality. This is in addition to, not instead of. And it gets it gets worse too. I mean, when we were out in California, one of our old coaching clients, Mark Shandra, who's now in the behavioral health 
aka recovery business. He helps people get over drug and alcohol substance abuse. Julie and I met with him, had drinks, had a nice, well, had dinner, had a nice conversation with him. And um, he was explaining to us all the different facets of the industry that he's involved in and essentially the types of people that are getting addicted to a lot of these substances and the different things. I won't bore you guys with all the details, but one of the things we did talk about a little bit was the fact that a lot of times the people that start abusing drugs and alcohol are introverts that aren't versatile, who feel like they're somehow, um, you know, not as good as, or like somehow the world's against them. Th- or exactly. Like they that. can't connect with other people. And it's just because they haven't, uh, essentially, heard or maybe I've taken seriously the idea that it's a learned skill as an introvert. And, and I'll leave it at this. If you're a versatile introvert, you have more potential. Uh, and I mean that in a practical financial sense than someone who's an extrovert, who's not versatile, Agreed. a versatile analytical person. Those people run the world. <laughs> I mean, no doubt. You know, it's funny about that. You were talking about that letter where somebody was kind of like mad about revealing the secrets oh, of yeah. the fourth quarter. Okay. So we do get occasionally, uh, similar reactions. And I, I remember a lot of our more versatile analytical clients, especially when we offer to do an interview with them mm-hmm. on this podcast, right? It, we used to call it the superstar series. A lot of times they'll be like, no, 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 no. I don't want anybody to know. Oh, I, yeah. I, I don't want people to know what it is that we've worked on, yep. which I think is, is interesting, right? I, I call a lot of them my velvet hammer types. Well, we have coaching clients that insist we sign in NDAs that we're not allowed to tell anybody <laughs> in their marketplace that we're personally coaching them. But yeah. you know what? Truthfully, well, but you respect that. I totally respect that. I understand and sure. appreciate that. Absolutely. And, and I, you know, if you can go to Facebook or wherever else and get, the, and everyone get the exact same information, what does that result in? Everyone doing the exact same thing. Right. And if I'm going to hire Julie Harris and I'm going to pay her, you know, her ridiculous coaching fee, right, to for yeah. her to be my personal coach, I don't want her coaching my competitor. That's right. Yeah, I get it. Which I appreciate. You know, that's totally. that's fine. But that's not good. Premier Coaching. Premier no. Coaching is available for everyone. That's the reason, by the way, we designed Premier Coaching. Premier Coaching is probably, of all the things that Julie and I have created, the thing, I dare I say, that we're, aside from maybe Harris Rules, our yep. book, is mm-hmm. the thing that we're most proud of. Yes. Because we are able to take the essence, the best aspects of private one-on-one coaching, which typically costs 1000 to $2,500 a month, right? We're able to take the essence of that, and we are able to drill down and make it so that they had tremendous value. And, it's, and Premier Coaching is only like $100 a month, Right. right. So we give, there's an option where it's basically a hundred dollars a month. So with premier coaching, you get all the same content that someone gets same that pays 2,500 yep. a month. Uh, and they even get a daily semi-private coaching call. That's all included with premier coaching. So if you guys want to learn more about premier coaching, which all of you should be, please do go over to timandjulieharris.com, click on coaching, click on premier and join as a premier coaching client. And like I said, there is an option where you can join for around a hundred dollars a month. In the meantime, thank you for all of you. Uh, for joining uh, joining us on this 60 day, I, I have to say, I was thinking this morning, Julie, when yeah. you and I were on walking in the woods here, yep. this has to be, I think as we ingest and digest all this experience with the last 60 days, mm-hmm. we actually have take time. Yep. You know, we're sitting back on our beach in Puerto Rico and we're thinking back this about this experience. I am positive we'll realize what an amazing thing that we actually had the guts to do. I know, I think you're right. Because it was yeah. crazy. Absolutely. Yeah, but the it Paris was a tour. And, and, and honestly, it, it, I learned a lot of new things, had a lot of new experiences just personally, mm-hmm. but also it reinforced how much on the right track our coaching program is yes. and what we say and what we do. Mm-hmm. Because when you come and caught and when you, it's one thing to talk with people on the phone or seeing them on a zoom or whatever. It's another thing to be in front of them at, you know, in Laguna beach or in Las Vegas or in Des Moines, Des Moines Iowa, or in, you know, Boise. Boy, or all the <laughs> all different the places, places we've been. been. It's, and it's another thing to see them using the system Yes. that we created, that we obviously are always evolving, to see them using it to great levels of success and to um, feel how grateful they are to us for having helped them along the way. And they always give us too much praise, truthfully. Mm-hmm. I, I really do feel uncomfortable sometimes yeah, with too. that because we have to remind them that we did the easy part. Right. And they had to implement. They had to take action. Right. They ha- they're the ones that actually have to do the work. They're living the life. Yes. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, in the meantime, guys, listen, and Julie and I are always looking for folks that are interested in being sponsored uh, by us at EXP Realty. If you're looking for, if you have not chosen a sponsor for EXP Realty and you're looking for a sponsor that's going to be proactive in your success, please do consider Julie and I. We would uh, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to earn the right to be your sponsor at EXP Realty. Just feel free to text me directly. And this is my cell phone. Please do text. Don't call. Please do text. Do not call. It's 512-758-0206. 
512-758-0206 if you're interested in joining with Julie and I at eXp Realty. If you're um, just getting started on your journey to join eXp Realty and you're looking for information, the easiest way for you to do that, and I'll text you back, um, just text the word, I'm sorry, text eXp, the letters eXp to 47372. Text the letters eXp to 47372. And when you do, we'll text you back a link. And with that link, you can then uh, watch. There's four videos that pretty much explain everything you want to know about eXp and a, a very robust website that explains all the reasons why you would consider Julie and I as your sponsor at eXp Realty. In the meantime, have a fantastic Labor Day, right? Labor yes, Day. That's I right. Get those we'll whole... see you on Tuesday. See you on Tuesday. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.